say good morning to you. Uh, thank you for fellowshipping with us. Thank you for worshiping God with us today. Amen. Amen. We're going to go on to um, um, our Zoom information this morning. Or did I have a song there? Now let's go to the word of God. Amen. I'm excited. This scripture coming out of John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. And I'll be reading that from the New King James Version. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Spirit. And the focus verse will be on verse 2. Let your heart not be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. Hallelujah. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And that where I am, there you may be also. Hallelujah. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read that second verse one more time. In my house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have not told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I pray let your anointing fall afresh on your people, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, let me decrease so that you may use me to deliver the word, dear Lord, in your way, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. Dear Lord, let me make it plain that they may understand it, dear Lord. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I just thank you, dear Lord, for standing here in your presence, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 The worshiping, giving praise here on earth is what we will do all the time in heaven. But are you making preparations? In life, there are many things we have to prepare for. Hurricanes, thunderstorms, life issues. What about that big snow? Because now it's winter time. The weatherman is predicting. I don't know about you, but I remember there was a time when the weatherman said we was going to get hit with the big blizzard. I would make preparation. I'd run to the store buying unnecessary food items. How about the weather pattern would change? Then there I go with snacks I don't need, less money in my checking account. Because you don't spend money you really didn't need to be spending. The Christmas season is here. You know, we running around, making preparation, planning holiday parties and dinners. These things are important for this earthly life. But my question is, what preparation are you making for your heavenly home? In the mansion that Jesus has prepared. I like to thank my nice, blessed Christian friends here at Rap to Ready because these last few months, they've been giving us helpful information to help us prepare for heaven. There are storms of life that we were recently told about in sailing through the storms of life and the things that we needed to prepare for these storms. We heard about fighting to the end, things you need to help you in the fight to be prepared. Some of the deacons spoke about staying on the right road. You have to be prepared to go the right way. Being prepared will allow you to see and enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Amen. We heard the scripture read earlier, and I like the New King James Version because it uses the word mansion. I like that better than rooms. And so there's a little backstory. Prior to chapter um, John 14, 
Jesus um, is at the Last Supper with his disciples. And the Last Supper story can be found in Matthew 26, 20 through 30. It also can be found in Mark 14, 7 through 20, 17 through 26, and John 13, 21 through 30. But Jesus is sitting at dinner with his friends. And Jesus is telling the disciples what is going to happen to him. Can you imagine having dinner with your friends? And then he tells them how he would be betrayed. And this story continues in John 13, 31 through 38, and about Peter denying him. Jesus also tells them that he would be leaving them. Jesus lets them know that they cannot follow him. Now, I'm going to assume that, that if they had known what Jesus was going to endure, they would not have wanted to go anyway. They watched him being dragged and beaten through the streets. With all he's getting ready to endure, Jesus is still making preparation for us. He encouraged us, letting us know that he was in control. He has this when he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. He was saying, it's all right. Jesus let the disciples know that they believe in God, believe in me. This word is still valid today because the disciples are going on, but we are still here. So I have a question. Did any of you ever play this game when you were a child, when you're out riding or watching TV and you see the big houses? Yeah. That's my mansion. Yes. <laughs> this is my house, yes. Well, Jesus has a mansion for us. Jesus has a mansion for you, if you want it. He has it all prepared. So in John 14, 2, you know, Jesus lets the disciples know that he is going to prepare a place for them. Not just any place, yes. but many mansions. Yes. He is leaving his earthly home to prepare a place for us. In our case, he's left it mm -hmm. and went on to prepare a place. As the people say today, now who does that? Yes. Jesus did it. This is one of his many promises that he's made. Well, how do we get prepared to live in this mansion? So I have some questions for you. When I go on vacation or a short trip, I make some preparations. And now that I'm older, I usually write me a little list because I have to. And so my, my son over here, because he's the youngest child, so he's stuck with mama. So when we riding together, when I'm driving, it's reach me this, reach me this, because the, the driver has to be happy. So one of my first things I have on my list is I have to get my favorite chips and candy. So my question to you is, while this may prepare me for my trip, is this going to prepare me to make it to the mansion? If you answer no to making it to the mansion, you are correct. Now, while we do need food here on earth, Jesus has provided us with the food we need to make it to the mansion. When Jesus was in the desert, Satan tried to tempt him with the natural food. But Matthew 4 and 4 says, he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And John 6, 35 tells us, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who belongs in me shall never thirst. My snacks in the bag will not serve any purpose at all just sitting in the bag. This is the same with Jesus. His word is the bread we need to eat. This means you have to read the word. You have to have a relationship with Christ. The scripture says you will never be hungry. Jesus' bread will sustain you if you use it. I like food, and I should have the same excitement for my spiritual food. Amen. So you know when you're eating snacks, you got to take a drink on something. <laughs> And there's probably some water packets in there, but I have them too. Yes. Yes. That's right. So if I'm driving a ride and I have to have something to drink, using water and soda, this is to help my thirst. Now, while this is preparing me for my journey, my road trip, is this preparing me for making it to the mansion? If you'd answer no to making it to the mansion, you are correct. When I get thirsty, I will have a drink to drink. When I'm finished, the bottle is empty. I'm still thirsty. And you know, when I grew up, you didn't just stop for anything. You stopped for gas, and that was it. So, but you know, but did you know, there is some water that never runs out. This water can even be refilled if you need it. This is the living water from Jesus. And I like this story in John 4. It talks about the woman at the well, a story many of us is familiar with. And Jesus asked this Samaritan woman at the well for some water. Well, she knew he wasn't supposed to be talking to her because he was a Jew and she was a Samaritan woman. And not only that, sister girl had a reputation. She had some things going on and they weren't holy. In John 4.10, Jesus answered her and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, who it says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. This woman asked Jesus some questions, and then he replies to her in John 4, 13, whoever drinks of this water would, I wrote that wrong, would never thirst. Whoever drinks of this water um, that I shall give him would never thirst. But the water that I shall give him would become in him a fountain of water, yes. springing up to everlasting life. Yes. Yes. To receive this water, all you have to do is ask Jesus. Right. And he tells us again in John 6, 35, you will hunger or thirst no more. Because when Jesus died, he knew he was going to leave us with the Holy Spirit. There is enough for everyone. You can always ask for a refill. As you keep Jesus with you, the water will never dry up. It might run low. You know, think about like them old fashioned water pumps and you had to prime it. But see, sometimes that might have to happen to us. The water's still there. You just got to help it along. See, the pump, we had to prime it with the water. And all we need to do to be primed is ask for a refilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have to pour God's word back into us. And if you can't do it yourself, there's somebody that will. Just ask. There are some other things I may pack for my trip. 
I'm putting this disclaimer out here about the Q-tips. My disclaimer is, do not say Deacon Linda said I can use these to clean my ears. <laughs> Put that disclaimer out there. But I do use Q-tips to clean my ears. But do you need them to get to the mansion? With our ears, we hear many things. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. We want to hear spiritual things and be able to obey and grow in God's word. Jesus used parables to teach, but you need spiritual ears to hear and know God's will. Matthew eleven fifteen says, he who has ears, let him hear. Hearing from God gives us instructions. It gives us direction as helps with our relationship with Christ. Jesus knows his sheep and they know him. As his sheep, we do know his voice. But just like Deacon De DeAndre told us the other week, you hear a good voice, you may hear a bad voice but you need to be prepared to listen to the right voice. Choose the right voice. I have a few miscellaneous things. Have some hand soap, some rubber bands, a little scrubber thing. <laughs> well, that's, that's packed up. I know someone is wondering, what in the world does this have to do with being prepared? to go to the mansion. Well, in life, most of us has obtained dirty hands or done some dirty things. We have scars and we have some things we just want to cover up. We may feel like if we use the soap, the evidence can be washed away. The Band-Aid will cover it up and some things we just may want to scrub, 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 hoping we've scrubbed it away. Do you know some things you cannot do on your own? You need to believe, you need to trust that Jesus is the only one that can take it away. And I'm sure if we look, we all got, we can find some scars and probably remember, especially the ones that hurt, where they came from. The physical scar may still be there, but let Jesus take away the pain and the shame. 1 Peter 2, 21, 24 says, for this you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us. But he left us an example that you should follow his steps. First Peter 22 says, who committed no sin? This is Jesus. He committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return? When he suffered, he didn't threaten, but he committed himself to him who judges righteously. Who himself bore our sins, he bore our sins, and his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, may live for righteousness, by whose stripes were healed. Jesus died so that we may be healed. So let Jesus have the pain and the scars. Then there's something else. I didn't have that in the bag. Now, the Bible, will this help you get to the mansion? What about if you open it, read it, and study it, and apply it to your life? Jesus knew what was going to happen to him, that he was going to be crucified. But he went to prepare a place for us. What do you need to be prepared to arrive at the mansion? 
when it is your time. You have your living bread. You've been filled with the living water. You have been healed. You have your Bible to help you maintain. But you have to use this stuff. You have to eat the bread. You have to want to be filled and drink the water. You have to want to be healed. Jesus gave us the promise. Even though he was speaking to the disciples, that word is still true today. There are many people saying when he is coming back, but we should be focused on living right and being ready. This mansion has many rooms available to all who wants one. If you're not saved, you need salvation. Because see, this mansion is only for God's people, the saved people. There is no sightseeing or getting, on, getting a glance. Your only ticket to the mansion is salvation. You must have eternal life that you only receive through Christ. Guess what? Not only has he prepared a mansion for you, he's going to come back and get you and take you there. If you are the ones, if you're one that has already given your life to Christ, continue praying, listening to his voice, and studying. If you are not saved, consider making the choice today. If you are a backslider, God will openly welcome you back. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we will gladly welcome you back to the family. While you are considering making one of the best decisions you can make, you may have some questions. Can you fix me when I'm broke? Is everything going to go right? What if you will something that I don't want? And that's the big question. Let me repeat that one. What if you will something? This is God. I don't want. Well, I still believe in your love. These are some of the lyrics in the song Believe. These are normal questions, but the right answer is to believe and trust in God's love. Will you make the right choice to believe so that you can be prepared? Will you trust and believe God's word? And in closing, I'd just like to say, I recently heard someone say, Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Are you prepared? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you would like to sow a seed, you may do so by Cash App. Dollar sign R R M S A L I S. B U R Y M D, or by mailing your seed to Rapture Ready Ministries Incorporated, 368 Cary Avenue, Salisbury, Maryland, 21804. Also, please follow us on Facebook at Rapture Ready Ministries Incorporated. May God's continuous blessings be with you and your family. Hello, I am Elder Dr. Sharon Washington. Our ministry is in the process of building a new sanctuary that will be a blessing for our growing congregation and community. To complete our new construction project, we are soliciting support from generous individuals, ministries, and businesses. There are several projects we have initiated to help generate funds, such as purchasing a leaf from our fundraising tree at $100 a leaf, or planting a seed offering of any amount. You may send your donation by cash app address dollar sign R R M S A L I S B U R Y M D 
or by mailing your donation to Rapture Ready Ministries Incorporated, 368 Cary Avenue, Salisbury, Maryland, 21804. Thank you so much for your kind consideration and may God bless you abundantly.